Hi, YouTube friends. Today, we're going to go over a practical use case of how you can use Power Automate to take some Excel information and send it to Outlook. Now, one of you asked if you could specifically use webinar information in order to send some follow-up information after the webinar is over. Unless you have a Teams Premium license, it, you can't do that straight out of the box, but it can be done with Power Automate. So let's take a look at this Excel file that I have here. As you may notice, there is a lot of information that is repeated in different columns. What I like to do is use this information right, right here because the name and the email address is right next to each other. Now I took some information from an actual webinar that I conducted and then I changed all of the names to be the standard fake users for Microsoft. So I'm not exposing anybody's personal data. So what I do is I take this information, I go up to the home ribbon of the Excel file and select format as table, and you can pick any one you want. I just happen to like this light blue. Now this table does have headers, so I'm gonna indicate that so it doesn't add additional headers to the top. And then I'm gonna click okay. Now we have all of the information in a table, which is going to help Power Automate find it. One of the things that I always suggest when you're working with tables in the Excel desktop application is to select the table, go to the top of the screen for table design, and in the properties section, you'll see that it's generically called table one. I'm just gonna go ahead and call this attendance. This can be particularly useful when you have multiple tables in a file. You may not always be working with a simple data set such as this. Now that we have our data set up, we can go to Microsoft 365 and then go to the app launcher at the top of the page and select Power Automate. From here, I will go to the left navigation menu and click on Create. This flow will be an instant flow because there are no triggers for Excel. The instant flow will create a button so you can run this flow whenever you decide is best. I will give the flow a name so that Power Automate does not assign a generic one. In this case, I'm going to say Excel to Outlook. There are several ways to trigger this flow, but manually trigger flow and creating a button tends to be the easiest one to use. And then all you have to do is click Create. This trigger does not require any customization, so we're just gonna jump right to New Step. In the Choose an Operation box, I will select Excel Online for Business. Now we can choose an action for this connector. The one we want is List Rows Present in Table. We have four mandatory fields, so I'm going to start with Location at the top of the list. If you click the dropdown, you will see several different options, such as SharePoint Sites or OneDrive. I'm going to keep this demonstration simple and choose OneDrive for Business. Next, we need to choose a document library. And because I chose OneDrive, that is the document library. Next, I will click on the folder icon next to File and then select my attendance roster that we prepared earlier. Now we will click in the last required field to see our table options. Remember in the beginning of the video, we only set up one table. Now we will select new step and then in the choose an operation box, we're going to search for Office 365. I choose this email version because it is tied to a business account, which a lot of Power Automate users have. Then I will select send an email B2. In the two line, I'm going to use dynamic content to pull in the information from our Excel file. Now registration email is one of the columns in the table which has all of the email addresses. So we're gonna select that one. Power Automate automatically inserted apply to each for this step. And the value is saying gather up all the names in the selected column before sending the email. The flow recognized that it is possible that there will be more than one name on the list. Now let's open the send an email v2 action so that we can configure the rest of the flow. 
the two line still contains the registration email dynamic content that triggered the apply to each step. Now we're going to add a subject line. This can be anything that makes sense to you, but because we're using a webinar example, I'm just going to call it webinar survey. Then in the body of the message, you can type in anything that makes sense to you. In this example, I might say something like, thank you for attending my webinar. Please fill out the survey. And then I would want to insert the survey link, but for the purposes of this demonstration, that's not really necessary. Just know that you can do that. And as I always say, you can make this information as complex or simple as you like. It just depends on your business practice and what makes sense to you. These are all the steps that we need for the use case that we have been working on. So now I'm going to go to the top of the screen and click on save. You will be taken to the detail screen for the flow, which you could find under my flows in the left-hand navigation menu. In the toolbar at the top of the screen, you will see the run button. This is how the flow is triggered. When you click the run button, a pane will open up on the right side of the screen, allowing you to check your connections. Then I will click on continue and then run flow. Finally, click done to dismiss the floating dialog box. You know that the flow is doing its thing because you can see the word running in the 28 day run history. Now I'm going to switch over to the Office 365 account of one of our fake users. If you were logging into your own email account, there are multiple ways that you can do it. I just choose to go to office.com because it is my personal preference to work on the web. So in the left hand navigation menu, we're going to select the Outlook icon. We are in Lee's email box. He happened to be the very last person in the table. So the fact that you can see that Lee received an email from me is a good indication that the flow worked as intended. I'm not going to check every single name on the list. Seeing this email is confirmation enough that our flow was successful. I've had a lot of people tell me that they get overwhelmed by Power Automate and really just need a simple breakdown at the end of a demonstration. So what we're going to do is I'm going to select edit and we're going to just go over some of the steps. First, I chose to use an instant flow to manually trigger the flow. The reason I did this is because there are no Excel triggers under the automated cloud flow. Technically, I could have chosen a scheduled cloud flow if you were going to send out the information at a regular date and time. Next, we chose the Excel connector and use the action list rows present in a table. This way we can gather up all of the information. Now you can keep the file in OneDrive, SharePoint or Teams, but for this demonstration, OneDrive was good enough and it made it easy because there's only one document library in OneDrive to choose. Then we chose the webinar file that we set up at the beginning of the video then we chose a table. Now keep in mind that it's really important to format your data in a table. Otherwise, Power Automate is not going to find it. The last step is to insert an Outlook action for send an email V2. When we put the registration email from dynamic content into the two line, Power Automate inserted an apply to each step and said, gather up all the values of the table before you send the email. And then we entered a subject line and a body for the email based on our best business practices. I went with something generic for this demonstration. So there you go. Now we have walked through the process of creating a three-step flow to gather information from Excel and send an email out automatically using Power Automate.